Donc bonjour à tous, on se retrouve aujourd'hui au Utopial 2021 en compagnie de Pichaya euh, Sud euh, Bantad. Je suis désolée si j'écorche votre nom. Euh, donc votre premier roman, euh, Bangkok Déluge, est sorti donc, aux éditions Rivage il y a peu. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire un petit peu comment ce roman est né, s'il vous plaît So your first novel was recently published by Rivage. Uh, can you tell a bit more about how it was created? How What pushed you to take the pen? Yes, for me, the book grew out of my uh, personal curiosity about the city in which I was born. Okay. And also, when I arrived back to this city, because I spent a lot of time overseas, seeing this completely changed city, or gradually changing city each time, and seeing these disjunctions um, in my idea of the city also fed my curiosity for the city. And I think that's where my first, my first desire to create a narrative of the city began. Can you tell us a bit more about the What happens in Bangkok Deluge? Can you tell us a bit more about what happens uh, mm. in your book, about the plot? Yeah. There's no um, one plot. Um, instead, the, the, my novel is a kind of, of composite view of a city and the characters that weave and intersect through it from a 19th century missionary to, um, to student protesters in the 1970s to uh, an American jazz musician to uh, Um, teenagers in a, a, a future made uncertain by, by the effects of climate change. And they're all kind of bearing witness to, to, to this city that's in a constant stage of birth and rebirth, construction, destruction, reconstruction. Um, and it takes place over the course of 200 years, um, zooming in and out and bringing in characters that are also not human as well. Ok. Um, vous ne citez pas directement le nom de vos personnages ni l'époque à laquelle uh, uh, ça se passe. Uh, pourquoi uh, laisser ce flou? Uh, C'est pour perdre le lecteur ou pour pas qu'il n'ait d'a priori? Ok, so you don't directly mention the name of uh, your characters nor the era in which the plot take pla takes mm. place. Uh, why do you choose to somehow leave your readers in the dark? I think that for me it was to create a linear, um, straight narrative was not enough. If I'm trying to create um, a, a portrait of, of a city as, as immense and unknowable as, as Bangkok or, or Kung Tep is, so for me I would try to create a picture that comes from these glimpses of, of cycles and rhythms that kind of connect all the characters together. And for me that, that I think that for me this is not, all, it's not, it's not a straight read, the experience. Yeah. It's more of, to me, like a kind of listening to music. Okay. So you, you would read this book at least I, I, I hope, in, in the way that you would almost listen to an album. Okay, okay, I get it. Um, Bangkok Deluge is also a book that makes you travel, but also that pays homage to the city, to the history of the country. We describe it as a world world for a city monster. Do you think the same thing? Do you think it's like that you see it? So your book takes us on a journey but it also a book that pays tribute to this city and it has been described as a world novel for a monster city. What do you think of this? I think that um, it is a city. To me, it's a city that's alive. Okay. And a city like this um, has, has many faces for, for, huh. for the readers and especially for readers, not just readers, but people who travel through Bangkok, even If you're Thai, even if you're from Bangkok, the city is could be a very different things. If you're born in a 
certain part of society, the city is one way. If you're born in another part of society, the, the, in another part of society, the city is another. If you're um, someone who came from overseas to live in Bangkok, it's a completely different city from those. And if you're a tourist mm -hmm. passing through, then you're you're in a way consuming a very different city. So it's a very complex um, city with many faces, and it's also not just a city that that agrees to the the tourism marketing of of the land of smiles. Like this is a place with so much cosmopolitan history, so much struggle um, underneath the layers that 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 a lot of people in the outside often see Bangkok um, as a kind of, of happy-go-lucky street food mm. place. Okay. Uh, le roman mélange uh, roman noir, historique et anticipation, uh, c'est beaucoup de genres. Est-ce que c'est autant de facettes que la ville uh, que l'on explore uh, Est-ce qu'écrire de la fiction, finalement, c'est plus simple pour parler de certains sujets pour vous Okay, so uh, your novel mixes black novel, historical novel, and prospective novel, almost as many genres as the facets of the city that we explore. Um, is writing fiction easier to talk about certain subjects, maybe? I think writing fiction is, everything is hard about writing fiction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There is, um, and, for, and for me, I think I adapted the narrative to what lens and what the characters um, I focused on at, at any one time. So um, to get the, for example, to get the language um, and the observations right for the chapters that took place in, in the 1850s, for example, yeah. I had to basically do research on American Baptist missionary accounts from that time okay. um, and, and reading through their accounts of their times in Bangkok, taking in s their perspective and views and their observations and the way that they talk about it, um, like the language in which they use, which is very different from, from modern contemporary um, yes. language. So, and then fitting that back into, um, into the story. And then for other parts, I think I used more neutral, a more neutral voice, but um, everything is still like of its own time, and 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 especially for the past mm -hmm. episodes, uh, a lot of research had to be done in order to for in order to satisfy my own curiosity as well. Yes. Okay. Okay. Maintenant, vous habitez donc entre Bangkok et New York, ces deux villes qui sont absolument gigantesques et qu'on pourrait croire opposées. Mais est-ce que c'est vrai Est-ce qu'elles n'ont pas des ressemblances uh, So now, now you live between New York City and Bangkok. Are they very similar or mm. can you find similar similarities or are they like uh, day and night <laughs> I think oh, every city is different, but I think for me as someone who has always lived in larger cities There is a certain comfort of, of, a, of, of a city that is always on. Like New York is always on in a way that Bangkok is always on. So the subways are running, the street lights are, you know, like it's emptier at night, but things are still alive. The same way that when I am in Bangkok, whatever hour of the day I can count on, seeing people around, um, seeing street food stalls and, and just always present traffic um, in, in, this, in these super cities um, that are, are, are just uh, always um, a multi-sensory experience for me. And I think that's an environment that I'm, I'm, I'm well used to. Nantes doit vous changer alors. <laughs> Nantes doit le changer. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, it must be quite a chain then. <laughs> um, it's uh, more relaxing here too. <laughs> yeah. Et pour les inspirations, est-ce que vous avez eu euh, des romans ou des séries, euh, euh, des sources d'inspiration pour écrire Bangkok Déluge So, what, what inspired you to write this story? Any book or maybe music or, or maybe the news? Mm -hmm. Oh, for me, uh, a lot of what went into Bangkok um, Déluge is uh, my own personal store of 
of stories, of, of memories, of my family's memory um, that have created, that have informed my narratives. Um, and also, you know, just from reading other books and looking at, at structure and art forms. Um, for example, just uh, in a novelistic sense, just reading Latin American writers, um, reading certain American writers, reading European writers and, and other Asian writers who have um, written in, in using similar structures, and also listening to music. And when I was writing this, I was, li I was listening to a lot of jazz and thinking mm. about how movements and, and, and flow figured into that structure. I think that that really helped to inform um, the character of, of the book. Okay. Et euh, maintenant, est-ce que vous travaillez sur un nouveau projet Vous avez euh, déjà des, des, des projets en cours uh, Do you work on a new book or any new project Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been working on a few possibilities and, and um, I always sort of like keep it mum and just say that I'm, I'm in, in a, an exploration mode. Ok. Et j'ai une dernière question, euh, vraiment c'est de la curiosité. Euh, est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire le nom complet de Bangkok euh, et d'où est-ce qu'il vient uh, Finally, out of curiosity, do you know the full name of Bangkok and its meaning Oh, it is a, a very, very long name. It's, yeah. uh, you know, like Bangkok, city of angels, great palace and temples and jewels, and it, it goes on and on. There's a, there was a, a Thai pop song that would just be a repetition of the name and I used to, to remember it but now it's it's a a lot of most a lot of Bangkok people also can can say the full name as well. C'est un nom qui vient euh, de du royaume enfin de de l'histoire en fait c'est c'est qui vante les mérites de la ville. Is the name that comes from history that um, um, tells us about the um, you know how the city is mm, great and right. um, Yeah, the, the, the name Bangkok is actually a Western name. Um, nobody in Bangkok it's says... Krumpet, Krumpet. Yeah, yeah, the name um, Grunte, uh, City of Angels, is the name that most people in Bangkok call, call our city. Um, and, and the name Bangkok was a Western name derived from possibly um, old colonial era maps that just signify this area that's... Um, a swamp of olive trees, what, oh. what, what was possibly there. So that also describes the terrain of this city that um, has always been like a very watery city. Mm. It's, it's a city that for the most part of its life has been very aquatic up until recently in which modernity has brought um, different ideas of how cities should be in order to support global economic growth. And, and, and trade, and now the city is almost an unnatural disruption um, of cement and skyscrapers and, and moving away from um, habitats and adaptation that, you know, adapted to the natural environment, like the, the stilt houses, yeah. the, the trafficking of people and goods by using boats and ships along the canals and rivers and that has been replaced by a different kind of life and you know in in the same way that Bangkok is vulnerable to what's happening now with the climate crisis um, it's also affecting a lot of the cities that have gone through similar changes as well vous pensez qu'un jour il y aura des Plein de voitures volantes dans Bangkok, le trafic qu'il y a actuellement sera également en l'air. Je sais pas. Do you think, Sorry. That, do you think that at some point there will be uh, flying cars uh, in the city? Um, I, knowing how Bangkok drivers drive now, I'm not sure if I would trust anyone <laughs> with flying cars. Yeah, sure. Merci beaucoup d'avoir répondu à ces quelques questions. On vous souhaite un très très bon festival. Thank you so much for for being here and uh, have a good festival. Thank you very much.